Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue and I'm bringing you guys this video, uh, video number three of my podcast box, uh, my Zoom Livetrack L8 box portable podcasting apparatus. Uh, if you haven't seen the previous two videos, feel free to check out the videos, I'll link them uh, here now, um, just in, in succession. Uh, as you can see, this has gone through, or if you have seen the previous videos, or if you've taken the time to look at those, uh, you know, much appreciated. Um, but this has gone through a few different iterations, and this is the current form, uh, which I, I suspect will be the final form of all this. So this is definitely the final form of all this. But this is a um, podcasting box. The idea is to be a portable box with the goal is to be a portable box. I can just kind of set up the table, have everything I need in one spot, uh, open it up, plug in like two or three things, and then turn on two or three things, and then boom, ready to go. Um, I have not achieved that goal. Uh, it's a little bit impractical to achieve that goal exactly, um, but I have come close given the concessions of portability versus having everything available. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll let you all be the judge on how things go, but just to go ahead and give a introduction to the updated box. Uh, as you can see, it's the same thing before. We have the Zoom LiveTrack L8, which is right smack dab in the middle. And this is a Pelican uh, um, IM Storm, sorry, this is a Pelican Storm IM2300 case or 2300 uh, case, if you rather call it that. But as you can see in the box, we have the Zoom Live Track L8. We have a phone that I use for some various media things for the podcast that I'm planning on doing. Uh, fingers crossed that that works out. And we have here the headphones that I utilize. Um, these are just the headphones that I use. These ones fit in. They're the JLab headphones. Just pretty generic headphones, to be honest. Um, and then we have some cables. Uh, this, these, or <laughs> these. These cables here are for connecting in the audio, uh, connecting in the audio um, as far as uh, the microphone audio. So this is all here. And then over here we have a power cable that's used to just kind of make it a little bit easier to plug in this power brick. Uh, and this power brick is connected to a USB hub, a powered USB hub. And the idea behind that is I can plug in this USB hub to charge everything. Um, and then in addition to the charging, uh, under this Zoom LiveTrack L8, there's a power bank. And that power bank is kind of connect or is basically permanently connected to this, uh, this uh, strip here. So I don't have to go digging in for the power bank itself to plug it in for power or to charge it. Um, I can just plug in just this one thing and charge it. And then I can also connect in, since this is a USB hub or powered USB hub, I can plug in uh, these two road cases to charge those up. And I can also charge up the phone too if I want to by plugging into USB. So. It's a pretty nice solution. Uh, the LiveTrack L8, just in case uh, you may not be aware, uh, it does not have rechargeable batteries. It does run on batteries or it can run on a power bank or it can run on wall power. So currently I have it connected into the power bank that's under here and that power bank supplies the power. If the power bank does die, there are batteries inside of the LiveTrack L8 just in case. Um, and then of course I can plug it into the wall if I really need to. So we have all those cool options available for us. But the main thing about this box, and uh, if you all have checked out the previous boxes, uh, you will definitely notice this right away, is that um, I do have two road systems instead of a road plus a ceremonic system. I do still have the ceremonic system, but I do not currently utilize it uh, in this build anymore or any longer. Um, I do plan on selling this ceremonic system. And the main reason for that is just kind of an expansion of what we talked about in the last video. Uh, if you've seen the last video, you know that there's, or you, you know that I mentioned that there was an issue with uh, latency when we recorded our, or we attempted to record our first practice podcast, uh, which, like I said, fingers crossed, things still work out, but <laughs> the latency was noticeable and it caused issues. And I was trying to find solutions to solve it. And then the last build, one of the solutions was a shotgun mic. And I would like to report that that solution is very serviceable. You can use that solution and it does work very well. I'll give a demonstration towards the end of this video so you can check that out or just skip to the end of the video to find out. Um, I'll have it all labeled down uh, in the uh, time bar or down in the, in the description. Feel free to jump to that if you need to or if you would like to. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about everything else uh, with the update. Um, up here, we have a space that kind of carved out in the foam uh, to store just some additional cables. It's in this little, this little container here. Uh, and this is just extra, extra cables, audio cables, uh, USB cables, so on and so forth. We'll throw that to the side so it doesn't uh, cause any headaches here. But normally it fits in that spot and it stays pretty, it stays pretty put. It stays well put. Uh, the top of this case is pretty nice because, um, you know, it, it's, <laughs> this foam is pretty well stuck in there and it does a pretty good job. I could also theoretically get one of the, um, the compartments that they have for this one to put it up there, but I don't, I don't think I will because I think it's, it's a really tight fit as it is with uh, everything set up as it is. So we'll, we'll, we'll let future me worry about that. 
Moving on to the box, um, outside of having the double road systems, um, I did also I did also lock in the foam. So I did that by using uh, flex uh, flex paint or flex glue or whatever it's called, the uh, rubber stuff that you can put, or some people put um, uh, man, uh, plexi dip, pl plasti dip. Sorry, plasti dip. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word for a second. Some people use a uh, plasti dip, but for me, I use the um, three layers of the flex paint. Um, to kind of layer in all this um, as you can see from from the shot above there are there are some spots here some highlights some imperfections this is mainly because um, I thought it was dry with the last layer with the third layer but it was not dry and I put everything back in the box let it sit for about an hour and I came back and I noticed that it was it was uh, not dry <laughs> so this is all because of me being impatient so just a constant reminder to be patient it does take a little bit for it to dry um, I would say, I, I would argue maybe it doesn't take quite a whole day to dry, like the like the packaging says. However, um, it does definitely take more than three hours to dry. <laughs> because my impatience showed and it's now here as a permanent reminder. But as far as um, as far as the reinforcement, it did a very fantastic job of reinforcing the rubber, or reinforcing the uh, pick and pluck foam. So, like you can see here, me, I'm just kind of pressing this pretty pretty aggressively. And it's doing a good job holding up. And of course, I wouldn't do that, you know, directly and just continuously because it would cause some issues in the future. Um, but that's what's in there. Um, I, I will talk a little bit more about this here in a moment. But just to go about the tour of the rest of the box, we have the um, the uh, fuzzy covers for the microphones, for the shotgun microphones. And I still do utilize the shotgun microphones I talked about last time. And uh, we'll, we'll give like a sort of practical demonstration in this video as well. So be on the lookout for that. It's coming up here. Uh, feel free to jump to that directly if you would like. And uh, as far as the shotgun mics, they are down here under this little uh, piece of half foam uh, so, so I can hold in the mic cable and the actual shotgun mic itself. Uh, so here it is, and here's the shotgun mic holders. So we're going to just put one of these together. And there you go. You got yourself uh, some shotgun mics. This is one of the parts that I kind of I wish I could keep it all, you know, built in together and set in there. And, you know, I, I guess theoretically I could if I just space it out properly. But I really don't want to. I really don't want to test the fragility of the shock mount that these come with. This is a sixty dollar uh, video micro from Rode, by the way. Uh, the twenty dollar uh, microphone by Boyu, I think, or whatever the name are, or whatever the name is. The twenty dollar microphone from Boyu that Best Buy sells, uh, Best Buy in the U.S. Uh, it is very serviceable. I do have one of those as well, and it works just as good as the Rode one. Um, I just decided to go for three Rodes just to keep it consistent, but. Um, if you want it, instead of spending $60 three times, so 100 and, what's that, oof, $60 three times is $180. Is that 180 That's 180 right? Yeah, it's 180 So instead of spending $180 for three mic for three shotgun mics, you can just spend $60 instead. You can just spend $60 instead for three $20 mics, and that will work way better, um, or work just as well. Save you some money. Save you $120, basically. So feel free to go for that. But this is where the shotgun mics are held under here, and I like this little clever system that I came up with. There's some extra cables here. There's a TRS cable, and then there's a USB-C to USB-C, just in case I want to connect my road to my phone or something for whatever reason. Uh, and then down here we have the power bank that I referred to before. Uh, you can see the cabling for the power bank is routed under the foam. So under the foam we have the charging for the power bank, which is connected to the power strip over here. And then we have the cable that connects to the zoom. Uh, to give it power, which is connected here, routed under, and it comes out over here. Uh, and it's pretty much straightforward. I mean, it's, it's nothing nothing too fancy to write home about. Uh, but the road mic systems, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about the foam uh, while we're here before we move on to the rest of the video. So this particular section is going to be p uh, specifically about the foam. So my apologies if you're not here for the foam, but uh, feel free to skip forward. Um, so let me just push this out of the way. So the foam that's, oh, actually, before I do that, the foam that's here is uh, three layers of foam. I'm sorry, three layers of uh, uh, flex flex paint. Um, we'll just call it flex paint. Uh, it's probably not the right name, but it'll be in the description if you want to see more about it. Uh, but this is three layers. There's two black layers and one clear layer. The uh, two black layers I painted on. So I used a paintbrush uh, from a can. So I had like a paint can of it, and then I painted it on uh, very meticulously. Uh, it took me about maybe an hour per layer. Um, and maybe more like 45 minutes per layer uh, if, we're, if we're calling like actual time to make sure it was fully covered and fully soaked in and then let it dry uh, for about a day, day and a half. Um, and then I put on a second layer of black and then I put on a last layer of clear. The last layer of clear, I actually used a spray can 
and I would not recommend the spray can. Uh, the spray can works, I guess, in a pinch if you just need uh, that much that's in there. The spray can get you, can get you about two layers if you do it correctly or if you apply it uh, evenly or as evenly as you possibly can. So keep that in mind. Uh, with this foam for this case, the way I have it currently set up, I could probably get about two layers from one can. So if I want to go for the four layers total that's in here, there's three layers on here on the top, one layer on the bottom. Um, if I want to go for the entire four layers, I need at least at least two cans of the stuff. Maybe three cans just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. But if you're using the paint can like I did, the, the black paint can uh, for the uh, flex the flex paint. Uh, if you're using the paint can, um, I think among the the paintings that I did, I did a total of, uh, I think I did a total of seven layers across this and uh, a test piece of foam that I'm going to bring up here in a second. And across those seven layers, um, five of those were from the can. Yeah, five of those were from the can. Nope. Did I do that right? This, this is uh, two, three. Yeah, four, five. Yeah, sorry. Five of those layers of seven were from the can, and the can I use. Uh, I, I can bring out the can. Uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll link the can in the description so you can know what size it was. It was, it was like the smaller can. Um, but from that can, um, I used like maybe like a fifth, one fifth of what was in there. So you have plenty to do a whole bunch of foam, especially if you have two layers of foam. So no worries, one can will get you through two layers of foam. Um, I also put some stuff on the inside here uh, to reinforce the insides. Um, as you can see with this particular piece of foam, or as you may not be able to see, but I'll point out with this particular foam and this particular foam and this one, they're just kind of single walls and uh, the flex, the flex paint does a really good job of reinforcing it. As you can see, I can kind of press on that with some confidence, uh, knowing that's not going to really fall apart on me. Um, and this piece actually, as well as this piece back here, these pieces were added in. So I originally started picking, plucking the foam. Um, and uh, with the roads in mind, but then I wanted to reorient them and change orientation. So this entire section was added back in. I used some hot glue gun, or I used a hot glue gun to glue it in first on both sides, just to make sure it stays in there. And then when I did the flex paint, I made sure to kind of add additional to reinforce it in both the corners over here and on the sides. It it did a fantastic job of keeping it all together. Like this, feel, I feel pretty confident that this is not going to, um, like like that that this is going to last. I don't think this is gonna this is gonna rip apart on me um all that quickly so that's pretty nice that's pretty cool so regarding the actual rest of the build though um like i said before i painted on two layers and then i sprayed i sprayed the clear layer the clear layer was sprayed um if you're doing the approach i would recommend doing the paints only because the spray is the spray can work you just have to have a good spraying technique and unfortunately in mine's like it was, it was very it's, this one's a lot better than the uh, test foam that i did uh, but the way the spray worked out, like you kind of have to make sure you layer it correctly. And if you don't layer it correctly, then you need to go back and follow up with a brush anyway. And at that point, you might as well just have painted it on. So as you can see in here, this looks relatively consistent. But that's because I had the opportunity to test out on this piece of foam, which was the old foam that I used to use. I'll put it to the side. This piece of foam, which is the old foam I used to use. And on this foam, um, as you can see, this is two layers. This is one black layer. And this is one sprayed on uh, clear layer and the clear layer is very splotchy like this is splotchy here this is not not that much over there it's not that much over there and this was like i said the test piece this is before like i definitely did this before i did that over there <laughs> and as you can see this is why this is the test piece this is the old insert that used to hold the road and the ceremonic um ceremonic mic systems um but like i said since i moved on to both a dual road system i don't need this one anymore uh, but i want to use this as a test piece just so i can make sure i'm applying the right technique uh, and this is what two layers look like. Um, one layer was painted on, the black layer was painted on, and the clear layer was spray painted on, or was sprayed on. And if you look on the other side, this is just one layer of the black stuff. Um, one layer of the black stuff looks pretty great. Like, honestly, you might be able to get away with just one layer of, 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 the, um, of the flex paint. Just kind of paint it on. It'll do perfectly fine. Just don't be too rough with it, because uh, it does, I mean, you know, this is pretty pretty good at like making sure it's not showing any any splits here but there are some sections like this section here we're starting to split up a little bit already and i think the section over here we're starting to split up a little bit uh and then this is what the foam looks like originally just to go back there this is original pelican foam um you can see if i press on it you can see uh, the splits forming up in there if i try to pull it a little bit you can see the splits showing there so all of this is just kind of in service to making sure that you have some more durability for your stuff and um 
yeah i mean i mean the the flex like i'm very happy with how things turned out even the test piece like even just this one layer this one layer by itself looks pretty nice and snazzy like i, I wouldn't be too mad if i just did maybe two layers and called it a day but i wanted to go for the three layers because i want the longer the longer protection although i'm pretty sure that one layer will last or two layers even will last just as long as three layers um i think <laughs> at that point of three layers you're just kind of doing it for aesthetics if, I, if i'm not mistaken or if, if i'm being honest but anyway so that's kind of the entire extent of the actual locking in your pick and pluck foam uh, like i said like 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 i said before it, it does a very great job of making sure it's nice and reinforced in there uh, make sure you get it nice and soaked in there too when you're painting it if you're going to take the painting method if you're going to use the plexi the plexi dip uh, method where you have the spray cans um, i would recommend um, just kind of over spraying and also taking a paintbrush anyway and just kind of or taking a throwaway, throwaway paintbrush, like a cheap paintbrush, and just kind of going back over and evening it out. Um, I have seen some videos of other people who've done their done their uh, sprays, and their sprays their sprays look pretty good. But um, I think that's more that's more to speak towards the technique they applied. Um, like I said, my first time doing it, my first time doing the spray, I did a bad job. Like this is pretty awful. This, this is not good technique at all. <laughs> so so those people in the video, uh, I'm assuming, may have uh, had the opportunity to test it out a few times. So. Just a word of warning for anybody who's not used to spraying stuff. Uh, if you're used to spraying stuff, then this is a relevant part of the conversation, but just want to mention that. Okay, so that's enough on all the foam. So let's go ahead and go back to the actual uh, mic systems. So I did mention before that the Ceramonic mic and the Rode mic, they have a latency difference in the previous video. Uh, if you have checked out the previous video. And if you haven't, I'll go ahead and catch you up. So the Ceramonic mic system has about a 12 millisecond delay between uh, when you say something and when the when the sorry when the transmitter re uh, receives audio and the receiver receives it, I guess. So when something is spoken to the transmitter to when the receiver receives it, it's about 12, 12 milliseconds of delay, which is for all intents and purposes just to make sure we we uh, properly properly um, qualify our statement here um, is really good. Twelve milliseconds is fantastic. Uh, 40 is according to this the sound standards that I, that the internet said existed um, 40 milliseconds is about where it becomes really bad uh, and it becomes really noticeable but 12 milliseconds uh, relatively good uh, good delay um, I, I think somewhere in the range of 20 to 25 is where it becomes I guess more noticeable to more astute eyes and more you know between the the synchronization of somebody saying something and then or sorry you sing uh, somebody saying something and the sound actually being received to your ears or coming playing through your speakers um 20 25 i think is about the noticeable level and then 40 is like the unacceptable industry standard so if you're if you're below 40 milliseconds in latency industry standard according to the internet uh it's okay it's fine it's, it's good it's serviceable it, you, you can work with it so because there's a difference between the, the latency uh with this being 12 milliseconds and this being four milliseconds which i don't know if i said but this is four milliseconds um, because there's a difference in latency, it's noticeable. If I had a pure ceremonic system, if I had a pure ceremonic system, this would not be a problem. If I had uh, four mics of ceremonic, this would not be an issue. But because I had one set of ceremonic mics and one set of road mics, it did cause issues because of two factors. One, the delay itself, and then two, because of the omnidirectional um, pattern, the omnidirectional polar pattern of the mics. I talked about this a little bit more extensively in the previous video, but don't worry, we'll test it out here in this video. Um, and uh, essentially, because it's omnidirectional polar pattern, because it has an omnidirectional polar pattern, it picks up sound in all directions. Uh, what will happen is if somebody's talking to their ceramonic mic and somebody who has a road mic is not too far away from them, you would hear their voice very faintly or, you know, kind of low in the road mic first before you actually heard their voice a little bit louder in the ceramonic mic. And that caused an echo effect. So it just sounded like an echo. It just sounded like, you know, when somebody's talking, you just kind of hear their voice echoing, but you can't really explain it, but it's there. And that was definitely something that was causing uh, pain, <laughs> lots of pain, because it's something that can be fixed in post-production, because uh, thankfully the Zoom Live Track L8 allows me to record all the channels individually and also record a master track. So because I recorded our podcast of three people that we're hopefully trying to do and make successful, um, with three of the microphones and then I record a master track I can go back in and uh, readjust the levels and do some post editing with the individual wave files but that was way more work to put in than, than I was willing to do so um, the solution was to try to find or the journey started to find a solution and the solution that I ended up running into the solution that I ended up accept, uh, accepting overall 
was to go for two road systems but there's actually two solutions here and we'll talk about those like I said this is why this video is going to take a while uh, we'll talk about both of those solutions here now so first and foremost um, the original solution that I was going to apply was to utilize uh, more directionality in the sound so the way to do that the way to do that was to have mic or shotgun microphone set up which I know kind of defeats the purpose of having such a portable build because I do now need to carry a second bag so I can hold on to the uh, the stands that all the microphones would be connected to um, but at the very least I get better quality overall and a better experience with um, or better turnaround time I should say with being able to get podcast out and once again this is assuming the podcast goes through I keep saying assuming the podcast goes through because it's, it's still a little bit up in the air uh, worst case scenario I got this cool sound equipment that I'll be able to play with forever um, so just let you know why I keep saying that um, so this was the solution uh, actually let's do the ceremonics on this one this was the solution and this solution is like I said serviceable the solution works the solution adds directionality um, essentially what happens is the shotgun mics here from the road these are the road video micro shotgun mics these shotgun mics change the polar pattern that the microphone is going to be utilizing from the microphone that's built into the actual the actual transmitter here from this microphone being a omnidirectional mic so oh, sorry from this microphone being an omnidirectional mic to this one uh, being a um, a cardioid pattern which a cardioid pattern is basically it picks up uh, really well in front of it where it's pointing uh, it picks up kind of not that great on the sides which is what you want and then it doesn't really pick up all that good at all like it picks up almost nothing uh, on the back of it so that means that you add a lot of directionality to the mic and that's very serviceable because you can have one person with a microphone pointing this way and they can talk directly into it and then uh, they can you can have somebody else talking in a different mic uh, facing this other side and the noise rejection that you get from the back uh, works out pretty well to cancel out any potential echoes or crosstalk that you might hear so ultimately that was the solution that um, that was originally what I was going to go for, but then uh, within my budget, I had the budget available to go ahead and buy some additional road mics. So I did. So ultimately, I did go with a double road system instead of going at the Ceremonic Plus road system. But I'm just trying to emphasize a point that if you do, if you do go for, or if you do have a mixed mic system to where one has one latency and one has the other latency, you can definitely solve that problem by adding in shotgun mics to get more directionality out of your build. And once you have that directionality, it will allow you to. Um, you know, just kind of position things well, and uh, you can cut down on the crosstalk uh, significantly. So, going uh, going from the mic stand here, uh, this is the this is just a tripod that I used to hold the receivers. This is nothing too fancy. It's just uh, a tripod with some cold shoe holders that I had, some spare cold shoe holders that I happen to have, uh, given the iterations of this build. But I use this to hold the on to the receivers. So I'll put that over here to the side. And uh, the next thing I'll talk about too in the middle of all this is I'll also talk about the, the stands here. So this particular stand is one that's different from the rest of them. So in this particular setup that I have with my, uh, with my fellow podcasters, uh, there's going to be three of us. There's going to be me plus two other people. And because I will be sitting in front of this box, because this box will be oriented or configured, I should say, in this manner, to where I will literally be sitting in front of this box the whole time. Uh, in order to save on table space, just in case table space becomes an issue, and oh, my apologies, I'm bumping the camera. Um, in order to save on table space, instead of having to, you know, kind of position this mic like this so I can actually be involved, <laughs> I decided to go for this clamp design, uh, which is literally just a, a clamp connected to a magic arm of uh, some sorts or some kind of articulating arm. And that allows me to get the microphone positioned very well for myself um, so I can actually have it positioned in a way that makes sense for me, whether it needs to be way up in here for some reason so if i need to make it over this like that for some reason and have a microphone set up or if i need to point it outwards uh, more towards me um, i can do that i can leverage the fact that i'm going to be in front of this box anyway um, to actually have the setup and all it really is is like i said just a just a clamp connected to a magic arm uh, that's connected to a ball head that's connected to a double cold shoe holder with some extra stuff so we'll set this one up And um, then we'll go into the actual live test that I promised everybody for the sound. So let's open this up. There we go. And I have to be a little bit careful because I think this is kind of top heavy. So this may not 
hold up too well once I put the shotgun on there. Uh, but it's still, like I said, it's still serviceable. Like, it still works. This is, I just have to use physics to my advantage uh, to help me out here. So this is me setting up the mic for the sound person, which would be myself here. There we go. It's connected. There we go. All right. And there we go. So so that's that's kind of that. So, you know, we have a wireless shotgun mic set up so I can join in on the fun. We have the uh, table mic uh, sitting here and we have the two different systems set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on the road. Um, the road sorry i'm going to turn on the zoom live track l8 and i'm going to connect in these uh, microphone systems so we can actually have the audio there and then we'll give it a test listen so i can actually give you all a practical example of what i mean by the latency just in case you were curious about what the latency and the sound issue was about um, I'm, I'm going to give a full-on demonstration uh, because it is relatively easy to recreate and i feel like it would add a lot of value uh, if we have if we have that uh, present now, of course, this is also, if, if you deal with anything with sound, this is all rudimentary. You might know this already or more straightforward. But me not being a explicitly sound person, this is all sort of uh, new in discovery for me. New in discovery? Is that even, did I even phrase that right? <laughs> this is all relatively um, recent for me. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll stop trying to reword that. This is new. This is new. Let's just put it that way. These, these are things that I'm learning the, the direct and hard way. The old-fashioned way, if you will. Not taking advice from the elders, but instead tracking my own path. I am okay. There we go. So we got this all set up. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug in the audio for you all to hear in the recording here. There we go. And I think that's all set up. Um, I did have a buzzing issue previously, so for my apologies if the buzzing issue is still there. I feel like I've addressed it. I think I've addressed it. If I have not addressed it, then I guess we'll have to kind of live with the consequences of our actions here. Um, but for right now, let me, oops. for right now, let me go ahead and set up the sound. Let's see. The purple is road. So the first is road. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to switch my mic over to the shotgun mics here so we can actually listen to the soundboard and it looks like it's at a, <laughs> once again, like I said, it's top heavy. So it's going to do that. I need to find a more light solution for this situation here. So I'm going to go ahead and set up, or sorry, switch over to, to the audio. So um, I should be able to switch over the audio in three, two, one. All right. So here I am talking from the Zoom. So you're currently listening to the Zoom Live Track L8. Uh, you're listening to me talking to the Rode microphone. And me talking to the Rode microphone is pretty fine. Uh, it's pretty good. You know, it's pretty serviceable. Like this is this is this is perfectly fine. This is good audio. Uh, at least I like to I like to think it's good audio. Hopefully it's at a good level. It's not blowing uh, everybody's ears out. Let me turn it down a little bit. <laughs> So that way we don't have too much, uh, too much excitement in the voice, or too many plosives. Um, I don't have the dead cats on, but I would, I would normally have the uh, fuzzy covers um, added onto the microphones. It adds a little bulk, adds a little weight, I guess, but uh, it makes sure that you're not making uh, too many wind sounds or wind doesn't become an issue, for whatever reason. So that's kind of that setup. So now we're gonna switch over to the ceremonic. So I'll go ahead and do that separately. So let me switch over to the ceremonic mic. All right. And now you hear me talking through the ceremonic mic. So for all intents and purposes, you cannot see my face, you cannot see my mouth moving, but I'm letting you know that I'm talking into the microphone and uh, it's it's good, it's good. Like this is good audio, this is quality audio. Uh, it's probably a little bit low because I actually have the volume low. So let me turn that up a little bit. But this is a uh, relatively quality audio and I can take it and point it in different directions. Oh, that's too high, my apologies. I can take it and point it in different directions and move around with it, you know, position it wherever I need to. And uh, we'll be able to hear my voice pretty well. So the main thing is that the microphone works. That's, that's the thing I'm trying to highlight, is that it works. It's serviceable, it's good, it gives you quality audio, uh, nothing too fussy about it, nothing too bad about it, it's just there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the Rode mic. And now that I'm talking to the Rode mic, I'm going to take the Ceremonic mic and I'm going to rotate it away from me. I'm gonna point it away from me. And I'm going to just move this a little bit closer. So I'm gonna move the Rode mic uh, closer to my face so apologies is going to be out of frame for you all but here we are uh and there we go so hopefully it's not too loud uh actually it might be too loud okay let's put it there and as, as you can see yeah I'm, I'm maneuvering this i'm touching on this and like we're not hearing too much noise which is pretty cool and pretty awesome from having the shotgun 
the shotgun um, mount or the the uh, shock mount. Sorry, <laughs> how do I keep saying shotgun? So so I have the Saramonic mic pointing away from me, almost uh, 180 degrees uh, directly away from me. Uh, you can see it in frame here. Uh, no, you cannot see it in frame. You can see it in frame here. So the Saramonic mic is pointing this way, and the Rode one is pointing this way. Uh, so that's what the systems look like. So I'm going to turn the Saramonic mic up. And as I turn it up, you may be able to start hearing some of the echo I was referring to, but this is because of latency. So I'll explain this part uh, so we can get a little bit more of an audio test and not a sound test. But the Rode mic is four milliseconds in delay, whereas the Saramonic mic is uh, 12 milliseconds in delay, or relatively speaking. So because of that, you're going to hear my voice from the Rode mic first before you hear from the Saramonic. Like I said, right now the echo is probably very minimal, and this is the proof that I'm trying to show that this is a serviceable solution. Having a mixed microphone system, this is serviceable. You can go in and post and maybe uh, uh, edit your levels if you really needed to, so you can make sure that somebody talking in the Rode mic, and even if they're cross-talking or even if they're talking at the same time, somebody who's talking on the Rode mic is not being heard too much on the Saramonic mic, so you can minimize the whole issue with uh, latency. Um, but the issue is that once you, uh, I mean, the issue is that you have to do post-editing anyway. And the idea for me is that I would like to do the least amount of post-editing possible, because the less post-editing I have to do, the quicker I can get things out, the more in tune, the more willing I am going to be to do a thing. So let me go ahead and turn the Saramonic all the way down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rotate the Saramonic mic towards me so we can hear more fully the, the full breadth of delay that exists within the system. So we have the, both the Saramonic mic and we have the Rode mic both pointed towards me uh, in this general direction. And I'm going to turn up the Saramonic mics at this time. And uh, as, as I talk, talk you'll, you'll be able, able to hear the echo pretty, pretty aggressively. Like it's, it's, it's an, an echo that's very, very noticeable. Uh, it is not something that cannot be worked with and serviced with. And, you know, it's, it's serviceable, it's doable. It's just it's very distracting. It's extremely distracting and it doesn't contribute to good audio experiences. So. I'm talking to the Saramonic here. So while, while you can see that um, the audio quality is fine and the sound is good, like I'm speaking on the Saramonic mic right now, uh, as you can see, I'm speaking on the Saramonic mic directly. Um, that echo, that delay, that latency is such an issue because these two different systems have two different latencies. If they had the same latency, it wouldn't be an issue. It would not be an issue. But because they have the same latency, uh, they, are, they are experiencing that particular issue. So just to demonstrate the last part, uh, or just to, I guess, uh, emphasize the last part on why I decided to go with the dual road system, is because even though the shotgun mic solution is serviceable, I'd much rather just have consistent latency between the mic systems. So right now I'm turning on the other set of ceremonics, or ceremonics, other set of roads, which are the green ones. So I currently have the purple one set up, and I'm currently setting up, or I'm getting ready to set up the green ones. And my apologies on the autofocus, it's a... Uh, it's set up in a specific spot and it takes too much for me to get up and change it. So my apologies for the inconvenience. All right, so we'll switch over to the Rode mic. All right, so now I'm talking on the Rode mic and we'll unplug the Saramonic mic. And the Saramonic mic is now unplugged and we'll now plug in the other Rode mic, the Rode Green, according to my labeling here. Uh, the Rode Purple is currently what you're listening to. We've plugged in successfully the Rode Green and we'll take the Rode Green and we'll plug it, or we'll actually, we'll just leave the road green just kind of in its uh, omnidirectional mode. So my apologies for background noise that you're about to hear, but I'll go ahead and turn the road green up. So this is uh, with two different systems. You can see the latency is essentially instantaneous between the two. Uh, there might be an audio difference, and it probably just got louder, so my apologies on louder audio. But if anything, you probably just hear me louder, and you probably hear a lot more of the background sounds in my room um, uh, as things bounce around my, uh, my voice and the fans in the background, all this stuff. But the main thing is that the latency is non almost non-existent because they're the same system, they're the same audio, and let me turn that down now. Um, everything is kind of consistent. Everything is kind of consistent with where uh, where we set it to be. So that's the main that's the main takeaway from all this is that having the same system is the best solution. And if you can manage to, or if you can't manage, or if you happen to be in a mixed microphone situation to where there's different latencies, specifically different latencies. Uh, then the shotgun mic approach uh, is very serviceable, very workable. Um, you can do it relatively cheap. Like I said, for if you have a three mic setup like I do, you can do it for $60 with three $20 shotgun mics. Um, I went for the ex more expensive video micro from Rode for $60. So that cost me $180 instead. 
but you can definitely do it on a budget. Like this is definitely achievable on a budget. And uh, I just plugged in the Rode mic into the uh, Rode Shotgun Video Micro. So we'll turn that up and both are pointed at me. And uh, if you do hear any latency, it's probably very minimal, but you probably just hear my voice very loudly. So <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and turn that down on the original I was talking on. And now I'm talking on the Rode, uh, on, the, uh, on the stand over here, mic number one apparently. Uh, and you can hear my voice, it's pretty fine. So this is me just kind of trying to give as conclusive or as inclusive, I guess you should say, as a, um, of an explanation as possible regarding what I meant by there's a delay. Uh, it's noticeable uh, in a podcast experience. It's not, it's, you know, you rather not have that. And uh, hopefully, hopefully this will help inform everybody else in the decision, uh, either the ceremonic mic system or the road system or just one system in general is serviceable. If all you have was just a ceremonics, you're perfectly fine. This works really well. It works fantastically. It sounds amazing. It sounds great. But when you mix the systems together, that's where the issue pops up. And that's because this one is faster than this one. And also, as a side note, um, the reason why I also bought the Rhodes, and oh, actually, let me switch over to my main mic, and then we'll close up the video here uh, with this explanation. So I'm switching over the microphones. All right. So I'm on the original microphone that I started the video with. Um, so I'm not using the soundboard anymore. Um, but one of the other things to mention too, and one of the inspirations for me to go for the roads is that the road has four milliseconds of delay of latency. And let's get all this out of the way. The roads have four milliseconds of latency, which is pretty good. Um, but um, I did want to wait for the DJ, DJI uh, mic systems. But the reason why I decided not to go for the DJI mic systems is because I would run into the same exact issue just in the other direction. Because the DJI mic systems, if I'm not mistaken, has a 12 to 10 millisecond delay, somewhere in that range. Uh, don't quote me on that, but it's something like that. It's not four milliseconds. The road system is just four milliseconds. The road system is just faster. The road system is just more direct and quick and snappy. And um, it, it sounds like the Ceremonic system plus the DJI, DJI system will work well together. Or just get two DJIs and you'll live, you know, live a very comfortable life. So... <laughs> So that goes a long way to say that uh, I bought this mainly because of the latency, um, but the latency issue could be addressed by doing the shotgun mics, but because I happen to have the budget for it, I decided to go ahead and splurge for the secondary road system. So that's pretty much it. That's, uh, that's, all, that's all there is to talk about in this entire um, setup. As you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty snappy as far as being able to set it up. You know, I can get it all configured in under, in under 10 minutes. Uh, get everybody set down with their mics, get everybody set up and squared away. It's relatively turnkey. It's not quite turnkey to where I can just open the box and hit pr hit play and go. Or sorry, hit record and go. Um, but it is, it is, is you know, has everything in one spot. Uh, I, I have to carry two bags, which is unfortunate. You know, I have to carry this plus another bag with all the uh, stands and everything, which is unfortunate. But uh, if if the podcasting people that I'm working with, if we did not need the shotgun situation, if we all just wanted to just go ahead and use the Rode um, micro microphones, just attach it to our lapels or something, we could just we could very realistically just do the podcast with what's in the box. Like, and, and this is one of the other benefits of having of having uh, just the Rode system is that now I have the option. I have the option to just do what's in the box instead of having to have a secondary box. So that's another that's another benefit that we can mention there. <laughs> so. So feel free to take all that with a grain of salt. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end the video there because this one did run kind of long. So hopefully you all enjoyed it. Hopefully it was very informative. Hopefully it informed you all on what things you can try to do with your own build. And it maybe you'll be able to build something more efficient and more cool than uh, what we have here. Um, and I definitely look forward to it. Uh, please share your builds if you do come up with anything neat or nifty. And uh, this is very much a a prosumer level build so i'm pretty sure there's some super fancy ultra awesome rigs that you can get on the more higher end uh in the uh in the enthusiast or in even in the uh, entry level professional or even professional levels but for now this is what i have this box is about a thousand dollars worth of equipment um probably closer to twelve hundred dollars worth of equipment so it's about the cost of a of a camera uh, of, of a nice little sony camera um so you know take that with a grain of salt this is not a cheap build <laughs> this is very much not a cheap build <laughs> but uh if all you need or if you want to try to recreate this all you really need is just this plus mic systems that's it so i could have used uh, wired microphones because this can accept wired microphones i could have used uh cheaper cheaper wireless mics which there are a ton of cheaper wireless mic options out there and i could have also very easily just just you know 
use the just use two mics and call it a day like you can use two mics and have two people talking to one mic and then you talking to another mic I don't know whatever works for you there are ways to make this cheaper is what I'm trying to say but this build uh, relatively pricey um, actually ooh, I just remember the case itself is 150 so this is probably a close to a $1,400 build Wow man things add up quickly when you're trying to buy small piece by small piece but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and end the video there hope you all enjoyed it and uh, if you have any questions feel free to let me know check the description for parts I'll try to list all the major parts in there uh, I won't list every single part but I'll try to list all the major parts down there and uh, if you have any questions let me know I um, look forward to hearing back from you all and hope you all enjoyed it and as always I will see you all whenever